Hi, I'm Mark Crisano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you with Primary Vision Network. Today, we're gonna to focus on two different things. One, specifically uh, new data points and unemployment, and then obviously our favorite, the frac spread count. So let's turn to what the unemployment numbers were today. So, you know, the expectation was for 22 million and we came in at 20.5. So let's put that into perspective. When we look at the recent April decline versus the cumulative job losses, you get an idea of how steep this really is. We're talking about something that is never been seen before going as far back as we can based on when data was available. We're still not quite at the level of Great Depression, but when you think about where we're going and how this is, how this is being calculated, we're going to be there. And the problem is going to be, what does this do to long-term recoveries? What does this do to growth? So now when we turn to the next slide, you can see two decades of job gains are lost. What does this mean going forward? I think it's important to look at how quickly the recoveries happened after some of these steep declines. It's a very slow and gradual pace. And it's really because you don't hire back everybody at the same time. You don't have the capacity because there's a supply chain. What are my clients demanding? Do I, do I have enough personnel to operate one assembly line or do I need all three? And this is gonna be the slow, painful grind back. A lot of this isn't being reflected in the market yet because people still think, oh, I'm furloughed, I'm getting a percentage of my salary, but that's starting to go away. And we've had some new filings from Boeing and others that happened at the end of April, which aren't calculated in this number. So there's going to be some significant problems as we go forward, which are going to uh, show up in the specifically the refined products. So now let's just take a look at gas oil, because I think gas oil is a good indicator of where that demand is. And gas oil, as we've talked about before, is at the lowest level since 2007, which is really the furthest back I can go in this specific function to look at seasonality. And this is a function of two different uh, components. One is you have just demand decline. This is industrial, this is shipping, this is diesel going into uh, trucks. But at the same time, you have jet fuel being blended into this, this side of the equation, which is also going, uh, which is seeing a increase in supply uh, to marry or, you know, to oversupply the demand that's already uh, been lost. Now let's turn to China for, for a minute and look at the exports from gasoline and diesel going back from 2003. They've reached a new record of diesel and gasoline exports. This is a mixture of refiners coming back quickly, but at the same time, you also have a decline in local demand, which means that more is being put on the water. So as people look at and talk about oil supply loss, you know, you, you have the maximum amount of shut-ins ever, what are the actual products doing and where is local demand? And China is the perfect example of a ton of new refined products getting pushed into the market which we're, we've lost the demand, the demand has, isn't there right now, and now you have an increase in supply, which is putting more pressure on these crack spreads, which is going to keep refiners hindered. Now, where is China sending it? You know, where is it going? What is their capacity? And I think it's important to understand the complexity of the Belt and Road Initiative. It touches uh, essentially every continent, and it also goes through the different locations that are seeing the most stress. So when you think about all of these countries that have borrowed money, that have invested time, effort, and whatnot in, in specific pieces of this initiative, they're going to continue to struggle. And you can also factor in and follow these as the uh, spread of the coronavirus. If you want to think about who got hit the worst, specifically one in Iran and one in Italy, and you can see why that would be the case based on their integration into this system. So they're also going to be the places that are going to receive the most refined product or China is going to try to push that product into those levels. You know, we've, we've already seen Singapore at all-time highs across all refined goods, but more specifically on that light and middle distillate, which is going to continue to put pressure on that crack spread. Now that we've talked about, you know, crack spreads, we always talk about refiners, we talk about the other side of the demand and it's pet chem. 
The petrochemical is also a demand point for oil, uh, some semi-refined products, and then condensate and NGLs. So when you look at high density polyethylene margins, this was where a lot of these companies were making a significant amount of money. You also had a large build out of new capacity, but the margins aren't there. And to be clear, they weren't there in 2019. This is not a new issue. You had an oversupply back to the Belt and Road Initiative and what China has done in terms of increasing exports, but you also have the falling demand. And the falling demand is only going to get worse when we look at high density margins. We, we could see them go negative in specific locations. But what does this mean for the, for the economy? And that's when we can look at chemical activity married with the S&P 500. The chemical activity is typically a barometer of where, is, where are things going to go? And here we, we're going to have a wait. You know, th there's the GDP is already showing that, hey, this is going to come down. This is going to get pressured, and this is going to pull down the S&P 500. So back to the unemployment, just to connect all the different dots, people who are unemployed aren't going to spend. They're going to be careful with their dollars now that you have this concern of, well, am I no longer furloughed? Am I unemployed? Am I no longer getting a, a partial payment? But now I'm just outright. And I have to go to the to the economy. Uh, I'm going to be a pressure on the economy, as you have the the lack of or the loss of uh, benefits, given the fact that country uh, the companies are letting people go and states are just not really uh, getting the the capital they need to support the unemployed levels that we're seeing. Now, wrapping up unemployment, the reason why we talk about different states and countries is because unemployment is never going to be consistent across all states. You have some that are going to see more, others less, which is why unemployment benefits are becoming a problem for some, and they've reached out for some support from the federal government, which is already going to have to issue about $3 trillion in new debt. We're not the only place to see this, as several locations within China have talked about only having about a month's worth of cash in order to cover some of the unemployment. This is why we look at both the US and China from an unemployment perspective as you have the, sec the first and second largest economies. And this unemployment is going to drive demand. And this is going to drive problems going forward. So when we think about the human aspect and, and really where this is going and who's going to get uh, hit the hardest, now we can turn to our primary vision for X spread count. You know, we're, we're going to see more declines as we continue on, but the pace is slowing. So let's, let's now jump in. So the primary vision frack spread count went from 55 to 47, which means that Matt officially lost his bet because it is below 50. But the question is now pace. You know, when you look at the chart, like the frack spread count over the last three months, you can see that the pace really accelerated and now we're starting to level off. You know, will most likely go down again, you know, next week. And then I, I would say the, the week after, but that pace is starting to come off. You know, our, our original view was that we would kind of normalize around 40, maybe hit 37, but then start to bounce back up. Now the bouncing back up and that recovery, we're starting to see some frack spread equipment moving around in the Northeast. So we could see double digits by month end, maybe the, uh, the middle of June. But something is definitely happening. Now, another focus is the rig count in terms of when was the last time it was below 200 in the Permian, you ask? And it was August 26th of 2016. Now, that's important because you can think about, all right, well, 2016 was long ago, but we had a very different world. We had balance sheets that were different. We had acreage values that were going up. We're not going to see the same kind of recovery this time around. And it only gets worse, tying full circle into, well, what is happening in the market? Uh, you know, Mexico has now declared another force majeure on refined products coming into the country. You know, we've already seen that from Ecuador. Uh, Mexico already did it from May through June. You know, this takes us through the second half of this year in terms of their force majeure. So you're seeing the demand destruction abroad. You know, Spain has now delayed the reopening of phase two for some of their largest regions. 
uh, Ch- you know, China is seeing a resurgence of some uh, COVID-19. So this demand is not coming back in the near term, which is why when we talk about unemployment, we look at the pace of the recovery on the back end, and it's going to be slow, it's going to be painful, which is going to uh, be a weight on diesel, gasoline, and total refined product demand, which then declines and pushes down oil demand. So that's why we think that the frac spread count, now it may normalize at that you know, 40, 37 level, but the recovery is going to be slow. It's going to be painful as we go into the end of the year. And that's why we have to really focus on this because this is where we're going to see how, how is production doing? It, or is production normalizing? Is it coming down? Where are shut-ins? Where's new uh, activity really happening? And this also leads into where's the equipment? Is it, is it sitting in some hot, humid area where the rubber ends are going to uh, start to crack? Are we going to have to worry about, you know, can any of this equipment really come back? And we, and we cover that in the primary vision supply uh, report, really looking at, you know, where's the supply? Where's the horsepower? Where are things, you know, really coming to? And can it ever, is it, is it just going to be spare parts? And these are things that are going to have to be talked about as we come into the end of the year. And we have to rationalize, you know, what is CapEx? You know, what are things doing? And that's why when you look at GDP, when we talk about chemicals and, and investment, you have to think about GDP. You know, what is the equation? Not to belabor the point, but you have C, with the consumer, plus I, investment, plus G, government, plus X minus M, exports minus imports. These are key comp- uh, components because the consumer is struggling. And which is why we think that unemployment has gone from a lagging indicator to a leading indicator as we're going to have more unemployment over the the next month as some of these numbers start to, to, to filter through and you have unemployment benefits being issued and there's going to be pain. And that pain is going to be a huge problem as we look at gasoline and diesel demand. But we have to consider what is the human aspect. And that's always the hardest part because these are people that want to work but can't. And that's why you're going to have some movement. You're going to have shifts in terms of, you know, where are the jobs? Where can they shift to find those jobs? But it's hard to do that when you have a pandemic and you have a spread. So as we continue to focus on, you know, these things and others, we're going to keep looking at the uh, economic indicators. We're going to continue to focus on what is the frac spread count doing? You know, what is, what is happening in the U.S. for production? And how is this being reflected abroad? And right now, Refined products getting pushed back on shore, you know, low uh, utilization rates, low demand for oil, which will be continuous. And now as we look into next week, what are we going to touch on? We're going to touch on EIA on Wednesday. We're going to touch on the uh, OPEC plus, you know, how are things doing now that we're here? The political aspect, now that we have some things moving around on a geopolitical side in terms of Iran, uh, you know, pulling out of possibly pulling out of Syria, you know, things adjusting in terms of, you know, where, where are things happening in, the, in that core area? And then we're going to look at China and Asia again to say, all right, well, what is happening with demand? And then we're going to wrap up on Friday, as always, with the primary vision frac spread count. So thanks for watching. You know, please subscribe, ask questions. We're happy to always take uh, different questions and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.